everybody, welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today I have your WWE Super Showdown 2019 full show review and results. As you guys know, I'm going to run through the whole card, tell you everything that happened at the show, let you know about everything that happened between the matches, the feuds, what happened at the show, and everything in between. We got a few matches to cover, guys, so with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So I didn't know there was going to be a kickoff show for Super Showdown, guys, but they did have a tag team match between the Usos and the Revival. The Usos do win here. I heard good things about the match, and I would not, you know, expect anything less from the Usos and Revival, but I did want to plug this in because it did happen at the show, and the Usos did defeat the Revival. So we kicked the main show off, guys, with the Universal Championship match between my man Seth Rollins taking on Trash Corbin, my least favorite wrestler. So, you know, we have my least favorite wrestler going up with one of my favorite wrestlers. So Seth Rollins comes in defending the Universal Championship. I knew I had to put trust in WWE not to put the title on Trash Corbin here, guys. I mean, my God, if they did that, I don't know what the hell I would think. But, you know, the big question in this matchup was, was Lesnar going to cash in? Was it going to happen? You know, Trash Corbin didn't look too bad in this matchup. Seth freaking Rollins had the rib wrapped, you know, he came out beat down and battered, he took to Twitter to say he would show up, even though he was injured, you know, from Monday Night Raw shenanigans. Seth Rollins comes out in this Avengers time-traveling suit gear. It looked fantastic. I absolutely loved it. I, I do need to make a custom of this. It's not going to be fun to make, but I think it will be sick at the end with the silver and the red and the dark blue, man. It looked really, really good. Seth Rollins does defeat Trash Corbin. Guys, he would pin him one, two, three. After the matchup, Trash Corbin would pick him up up and hit him with an end of days post matchup. You know, he had to get that heat back. Then out of nowhere, guys, the beast in the bank, the beast incarnate, Trash Corbin would leave the ring. You still had, you know, uh, Seth Rollins Universal Champion was still chilling in the ring. Out comes the beast. You know, we thought we were going to get a cash in. He comes out there. Brock Lesnar was wielding a steel chair, guys. Seth Rollins came out, low blow Brock Lesnar right in the ball sack. Got the upper hand, took the steel chair, beat the hell out of Brock Lesnar, curb stomped the Brock Lesnar onto the briefcase, and Brock Lesnar is taken care of, guys. No cash in right now. Seth Rollins is still your Universal Champion. I called this now. We're still waiting. Could Brock Lesnar ca cash in on Kofi Kingston? I was feeling it. I was feeling it, but would it happen? Next up, guys, we had the Intercontinental Championship match between my boy Finn Balor as the Demon. The Demon King was showing up on this day in Saudi Arabia, taking on Cian Almas. Coming into this match, I thought it would be match of the night, and these guys did not disappoint, guys. They totally brought it. Fantastic match between the two. Um, I hate that the crowd couldn't totally get into it. You know, they weren't completely into it. There were, you know, a little bit of the crowd. There was like a small little, you know, bundle of fans in there chanting, this is awesome. But, you know, for the most part, there wasn't pops and, you know, big reactions like you would expect from this had this happened on U.S. soil. But what a great match. I knew it would be. The Demon looked fantastic. I loved it. I loved how it like was coming off the shoulder. It's really cool to see how he changes it up every single time, and it looked great. It looked different from Mania, and it was really sick to see. The end of the matchup came when the Demon took to the top rope. Guys, Cian almost tried to interrupt. Finn Balor would then get him in a DDT, hit him in like a front face lock DDT off the top rope, hit him with a coup de gras, and you knew it was done from there. What a great way to finish it off with the Demon picking up the victory. Cian Almas looked great in defeat. Both men beat the hell out of each other, and it was just really fun to watch. But my boy, the Demon, does come out on top, and he is still your Intercontinental Champion. Next up, guys, we had the big dog Roman Reigns taking on the best in the world. <laughs> Shane McMahon with Drew McIntyre. I, did fit, I didn't know Drew McIntyre would be ringside with Shane, but I did mention in my predictions that I thought that Drew McIntyre or Elias would get involved in the matchup, but Drew McIntyre was ringside for this thing. This matchup was boring because I did not care about it, guys. I really did not. The crowd was chanting, this is boring. They were chanting CM Punk, I do believe. I heard that in the crowd in Saudi Arabia. So I think the same guys that said this is awesome in the Finn Balor matchup were chanting CM Punk during this matchup, and I was the same way. I wasn't invested into it at all, so it just really did it in for me. But pretty much the end of the matchup would come when the referee would get knocked down. Drew, Drew McIntyre would roll into the ring, hit a Claymore kick on Roman Reigns. I thought for sure he was going to kick out, guys. I thought Roman Reigns was going to kick out of that Claymore kick after that whole matchup and then the interference, but you know what? He did take the pinfall. Shane McMahon defeats Roman Reigns, and we have shenanigans. So I guess this feud is going to continue, and I guess it should. I guess 
no feud should really end here because it's sort of a live event and it's not really, you know, uh, it's not exactly a real pay-per-view, but I guess it is because, you know, Brock Lesnar tried to cash in on Seth and it just, I, I don't know. I, I really don't know how to feel about that, but I guess this feud will continue. Shane McMahon does defeat Roman Reigns with the help of Drew McIntyre, who I hate that is still with the tag team partner slash partner. Guys, get this man alone. Get this man the leader of a faction. Get this man to do his own big thing. And the one thing I will add to that, though, is a little asterisk, is it's kind of cool to see him tagging with Shane after Vince McMahon dubbed him the chosen one. It's kind of cool to see him teaming up with the McMahons after, you know, uh, Vince McMahon backed him all those years ago. I don't know. Something to, something to think about that could be cool, but they, but they ruin it. Next up, guys, we had the handicap match between Lars Sullivan, who I think is the most boring superstar on the entire roster, and a handicap match with the Lucha House Party. And this is the matchup that I cared the least amount about, guys. I literally could not give less of a damn about this matchup. I really don't like Lars Sullivan. I think he's boring. Nobody really cares about the Lucha House Party because they make them look like jokes all the time. I mean, it's really hard to back a team like that. I think there's some talent, you know, Kalisto and all them. I think Grand Manta League, Lindsay Dorado, they're individually talented, but I just am not supportive of this group here especially going against Lars I mean I like him more than Lars Sullivan don't get me wrong but anyways who cares about this matchup um, I really was making a couple sandwiches during this matchup so I really don't know what happened but I'm sure it was formulaic and I'm sure that it was just Lars Sullivan being a beast for the majority of it you know some high flying luchador ability from the lucha house party but I did catch like the last five minutes of this thing and I never saw a pinfall so did anybody actually pin anybody I don't even know I, I didn't see a pinfall but Lars Sullivan rolls out he beat the hell out of the Lucha House Party, and then his music goes off, so I, I don't know. I, I didn't see a pinfall, but correct me if I'm wrong, but who cares about this matchup anyways? On to the next one. Next up, guys, we have my boy Randy Orton taking on Triple H, and I was hoping Triple H was going to have some sort of nod or, uh, you know, comeback to AEW from Cody Rhodes at Double or Nothing. That did not really happen. At least I didn't notice anything. Another thing I want to mention is that Lars Sullivan apparently won due to DQ by the Lucha House Party when they were beating him down. That disqualified them. Very, very weird coming off. I, I know that has nothing to do with this matchup. Just wanted to mention that I do know what happened. Apparently, Lucha House Party got DQ'd. Really stupid. Who cares? Anyways, moving on. Randy Jordan had on this sick AF like snake red black and white gear it looked fresh I don't like when he puts the RKO on the knee pads it just looks really create a wrestler Lee looking I don't know from 2k it just looks awful I, I don't like the RKO logos on the knee pads just stick to the snake skin with the color on the knee pads I think that looks a lot better but I love the red gear going in you know I knew this matchup was going to be long I knew this matchup was going to be a slow burn when he came into his later years guys he always always has a slow burn matchup where it goes about 20 to 30 minutes and and it's going to be, you know, pick apart a body part, you know, move in, get slower and slower, closer to, you know, an up-tempo matchup. And then you finish with a nice reversal or something like that. That's usually how the matches go. This one was no different. And you know what? It was it was a solid win. I know it was boring at times, but he worked the arm of Orton. They had some good back and forth. The last 10 minutes were a lot better than the first 10 minutes. And I enjoyed the matchup. Was boring at times, not going to lie. I did lose interest halfway through. But then they picked it back up. And I do agree with Randy Orton winning. I think that was the right choice here. My boy Randy Orton picks up the win over Triple H. And he was rocking some fresh gear. I got a lot of customs to make. We got Avengers. Seth Rollins, Demon Finn Balor, Randy Orton in the red. I mean, my God. But anyways, Randy Orton defeats Triple H. Next up, guys, we have the singles match between Jan Strowman taking on Bobby Trashley. And I say this because uh, Bobby Trashley is just super duper boring, guys. I mean, it's so sad to see. When I was a kid, I used to love him. I don't know why. I guess it was just his big athleticism with his freak of nature size. And then Jan Strowman, you guys know how I feel about him. The ship sailed a long, long time ago. But coming into this matchup, I said that it could be entertaining if they showed off their athleticism. Both men are freaks of nature that can move and can jump, and they're very athletic for their size. So coming in, guys, they actually did showcase a bit of that with the, you know, leaping each other and hitting the splits and, and all that good jazz, showing off the strength with the power moves between the two. And I actually enjoyed this matchup. I thought that they showcased their abilities well, and it went about the way that I thought it would, and uh, it delivered. I thought that, you know, I, I, I found myself engaged the whole time. I was watching the whole time. And you know what? Either though, even though I couldn't back either character, I still enjoyed the matchup, and Braun Strowman does defeat Bobby Trashley, or Jan Strowman, I'm sorry. 
sorry, does defeat Bobby Trashley with a running power slam, one, two, three, and I forgot to mention that, that arm wrestling match that they have had on YouTube, they posted it to YouTube, guys, that thing has like 10 million views or something like that, so kids love, you know, these two guys because they're so big, like kids, I can definitely see that's why they back them, I think that's why Bobby Lashley and Braun Strowman on a serious note work in WWE much better than anywhere else is because they are such freaks of nature, they work better in that limelight of WWE. But Braun Strowman does defeat Bobby Lashley. Next up, guys, we have the WWE Championship match between Kofi Kingston taking on my boy Dolph Ziggler, getting this opportunity right here. Very surprising that Dolph Ziggler gets this opportunity. You know, I figured coming into this matchup, we all knew, guys. I even called it my predictions. I said to you, what did I say to you? I said, guys, WWE just called up Dolph Ziggler. They wanted him to come up to Saudi Arabia. You know, Sami Zayn couldn't be here. Kevin Owens couldn't be here. They didn't have a challenger for Kofi, so they said, let's call up our boy Dolph Ziggler. He's doing our, his comedy tours and stuff. Let's Let's call him up, get him up here, and we'll just have him jump out to Kofi, and that's pretty much what he did, guys. I mean, he didn't... It was just your basic, like, SmackDown Live matchup. I don't think they really wanted to do anything creative. Dolph Ziggler um, just seemed like he was just here to collect a paycheck, you know, put on a match and get out of there. And you know what? I don't blame him, to be honest. Um, not the greatest matchup, just a regular old SmackDown Live matchup. But after the match, he cut a promo with Byron Saxon, and apparently we're going to get a rematch. No, Nobody at ringside, you know, nobody helping Kofi. That's why Dolph Ziggler blamed... Uh, Xavier Woods for the loss here. And apparently we're going to get these two in a steel cage. So uh, maybe we'll get a WWE Championship match in a steel cage on SmackDown Live or something. And then Brock Lesnar will cash in because Brock Lesnar did not cash in. Kofi Kingston wins the matchup and then uh, I was expecting a Brock Lesnar cash in. That did not happen. We just got this matchup straight up and I'm thinking maybe Brock cashes in after the steel cage match maybe. I I'm not sure guys, but we're definitely going to get another matchup out of these two and hopefully it's better than this one. But there you go. Kofi Kingston retains the WWE Championship. Forgot to mention my boy was rocking the all black, guys. He had the black tights, black tape, and the black boots made a return. He usually wears the, uh, you know, the white. He used to wear the black a few years ago, but he brought them back here with the black boots and the black tights. Gonna have to make a fix-up Ziggler, but that was fresh. Anyway, Ziggler loses. Next up, guys, we had the WWE largest battle royal ever with the 50-man battle royal. We had a bunch of people in here, guys. We had the AOPP making their big return here. The Viking Raiders slash War Raiders were in here. We had Ricochet. We had Cesaro. We had Mustafa Ali. We had the Revival, the Usos. We had a bunch of different superstars in here, guys. I can't even rattle them off, but there were 50 men. Even my boy Cedric Alexander was in here. Somebody that wasn't in here was R-Truth. Where the hell was R-Truth, guys? You didn't even bring in the 24-7 the champion? You couldn't bring our truth into the Battle Royal? Why the hell was he on the airplane? Jinder Mahal was in this Battle Royal. Why didn't you have the 24-7 champion? They should have used my idea and had like 50 different guys. All the 50 men should have just been rolling each other up. Our truth gets pinned. Next guy gets pinned. Next guy gets pinned. And they should have had like a train of rolling up. How entertaining would that have been? That would have been awesome. Who's going to win this thing? Who's going to walk out as champion before he gets eliminated? They ruined that. This Battle Royal was pretty much a waste of time. I mean, the, the club got eliminated almost immediately, guys. They had to fly all the way to Saudi Arabia, collect a small check just to get thrown over the top rope in like 15 seconds. Just really wasteful, guys. The Raw Tag Team Champions, Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins, were in this thing, and they didn't even make an impact. The United States Champion, Samoa Joe, was in this thing, and he was in like the final six or seven, but he ended up getting eliminated. Anyway, the guy, uh, Mansoor, I think is his name, he has the Majin logo on his belt loop, which I guess is supposed to be the Mansoor or Mansoor logo. Clearly, copyright infringement, taking that from Dragon Ball Z and the Majins. But anyways, I mean, this Battle Royal was a big waste of time. I guess it was a cool moment to get the pop from the Saudi Arabia crowd, but I mean, this won't come of anything. It's not like he's going to get a big push or anything like that. It was literally just to get a pop and have a cool, feel-good moment that, uh, you know, the 50-man the Battle Royal, that's going to be a great YouTube video. I can see that thing getting like 20, 50 million views on their YouTube channel. It probably will, so that is something they probably wanted to do, but this Battle Royal was a waste of time. I really didn't care for it. I mean, you had some, I guess, cool things happen throughout. I, I'm sick of the hiding under the apron spot by Titus O'Neil. My God, can we stop doing that? He did nothing in this battle royal. Just dumb, man. Who cares? Mansoor wins. I guess cool, feel-good moment, but that, that, is, that is all. 
And for our main event, ladies and gentlemen, we had The Undertaker taking on Goldberg. First time ever headline matchup here in the main event between these two guys. And this matchup was not very good at all, guys. Both men were totally exhausted. They couldn't lift each other up at all. Not much of anything. We had a few finishers. Spear, spear, choke, slam, pile driver. I am going to actually upload a live reaction to this video right after the review, so you guys need to go watch it. I will. Be, it's going to be a literal live reaction to my, to my thoughts on this match as it was taking place, guys. And it was not very good as far as... Just both men were totally just exhausted. Goldberg tried to lift Undertaker up for a jackhammer, and I said it before he even lifted. I said, there's no way, guys. He's, he's just way too exhausted to lift it. And sure enough, it looked like a brain buster or a suplex. Did not look good at all. Undertaker gets the win. I did predict Undertaker to win. I like that he won here. You know, that's uh, probably a petty move by Vince McMahon. He's like, yeah, take that WCW. Another win for us, even though, uh, you know, you know Vince McMahon's petty like that. But there we go with the uh, the matchup, guys. That was pretty much your Super Showdown 2019 review. I mean, not much to this matchup at all. Another, It's just another match we can look to, to uh, why Undertaker should go ahead and retire. I love Undertaker. I love Goldberg. But both men should just call it quits. They were not in the the in-ring shape to get through this match and it just wasn't good man but that pretty much does it for your super showdown 2019 review not uh not the greatest show guys i mean we i think all the 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 gear was the best part of this matchup the gears that everybody wore tonight was the best part of the show finn balor seth rollins randy orton not much to any of the matches i think finn balor and cn almost definitely stole the show as far as matchups go dolph ziggler's match was disappointing this matchup was just totally just not very good and i mean that that pretty much does it. But that pretty much does it for today's video, guys. Go tune into my live reaction of Goldberg versus Undertaker to see my live thoughts as, as it was taking place. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE figure videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.